What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. I am your host, Justin Harold, and with me, as always, my co-host, Jeff Santa. Today, we are going to talk Brown's defensive coordinator position because Joe Woods is gone, finally. Finally. After three seasons, 1,171 points allowed. <laughs> That's so many points when you say it like that. With a grand total of negative 20, negative 22, and negative 11 through three seasons in point differential. Joe Woods. Hey, got better been- than last year. Well, I'm very sorry to tell you this, but that negative 11 was his first year. The negative oh. 22 was the second year, and the negative 20 was this year. So, yes, he did improve by two points. So, uh, But oh. Joe Woods has been fired uh, coming the day after the final game. Jeff, we thought it probably should have been done last year at the end of the season. Then again, four games within the season. Now it's finally happened. Your thoughts on Joe Woods? Oh man, just he just resided over one of the worst run defenses ever. And honestly, the thing about Joe Woods is that he would, the defense would start to perform like right when his back was up against the wall, which just never was good enough because by the time that that came in the season, it was pretty, it's pretty tough to come back, you know, if your defense sucks for the first eight or nine weeks, which has been the thing the last two years. And we talked about that. If he's bad through eight games this year, just get rid of him. So am I glad that he's gone? Yes. I wish they would have sent a message during the season. I know that we're, we're not really like that. We don't want to be theatrical in this organization for whatever reason. I don't know why that that's some sort of controversy, but just get rid of the guy after a game where he sucks, you know, Atlanta, this new Orleans game. I, I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see how this off season goes with looking for a new defensive coordinator. Yeah, I think the I think the only reason a message might not have been sent, Jeff, is because of what you had told me, you know, a couple of weeks earlier. Is just that when you fire Joe Woods, who's going to be that guy to step up? You right, know? right. We can't, you know, it's like you you think they can't be any worse, but maybe they really would have been. So I guess we move on from Joe Woods, and now the Browns are in the search for a defensive coordinator with four names listed as of right now. Gerard Mayo from New England, the linebacker coach. Jim Schwartz, the defensive coordinator from uh, the Eagles. Uh, Brian Flores, everyone should know who that is probably. But if you don't, head coach, former head coach of the Miami Dolphins and defensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then was last, Flores their DC? Was, yes. he li- was he their linebackers coach? He was the DC and linebackers coach. Oh, he was both. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I believe, right? I thought th- I thought he was just their linebackers coach. I don't know who their DC was. Hmm. I, th- I always thought he was the DC, but I know he's the linebackers coach, but I thought he was the DC. I mean, so- typically you have a position that you coach as well, but um, like Joe Woods coached DBs. But anyways. He tried. He tried he to tried. coach DBs. He tried to coach DBs. And then Sean Desai from uh, Seattle Seahawks. Jeff. It's hard to really like get into the corner coordinator talk um, more than the head coaching position, because when you really go and try to look for things, it's a matter of being like, all right, well, does he actually do this thing better than the previous one? Or does he have a different scheme than what the previous coach was running? So with that being said, of the four coaches, obviously Brian Flores is the most known. Uh, Gerard Mayo, and this is, I'm sorry, I should have preferred this. This is me speaking about where my list is right now of guys named. Um, Flores is at the top. Mayo is closely behind him. Um, and then Schwartz is underneath him by a good mile. Desai is underneath Schwartz by a good mile. I know Flores loves to blitz. We did not blitz a lot. Mm-hmm. Gerard Mayo loves to blitz. We did not blitz a lot. Desai and Schwartz, to me, are two guys who do more of the Joe Woods type defense. Sure. I totally agree. But better. But better. Right, right, right. And so, of those four candidates, what is your, you know, nod of approval? What are you looking 
at to be like, okay, I'm go I'm on for this guy. I'm on for having him be the DC. <sighs> okay, well, if whoever and I don't know how you figure this out in interviews, but whoever the guys want to play for, you need to find a guy who the guys want to play for. I think we could all agree about that. But I like experience in the conference and experience in the division. So, I mean, that it makes it really easy for me. And I'm not going to claim that I know everything about how Schwartz coaches or how uh, 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 Desai, you know, runs a defense. But, I mean, the easy choice for me is Brian Flores because I've actually seen his body of work. And I know that he's done a good job in the past containing Lamar Jackson. I, I really like that. I think that that's cool, regardless if Lamar's in on the Ravens or there's a lot of quarterbacks like that, though. So I'm on board for that. Plus, if you could take somebody from a division rival from their staff and put them on your staff, I don't see how you pass that up. Right. He has all the inside information about Pittsburgh for them. At least you think you have a decent game plan coming from him. Say, hey, maybe here's how they run their defense. Hey, maybe here's how they run their offense. And I just think that he's basically – he could have been a head coach if there wasn't, you know, all the things going on with him in the NFL. And he's basically like having another head coach on your roster. Now, I feel like Schwartz would be a little bit similar than that. And like you said, the blitzing, with the amount of blown coverage we've given up this year, who gives a rat's ass if we blitz and give up blown exactly. coverage? I'm in. That's the point. That's the point of blown coverages. Correct. Blown, cover blown coverages is like, hey, we trust you to play one on one with guys right. or you know be just be in the right spot while the front seven just completely go and send it and we didn't do that they would just be like oh hey our front four is going to send it and then three guys are going to mm -hmm. roam around in no man's land and then two of our guys are going to play man and then two of our guys are going to look at each other and say oh, i thought that was your job and that's what it is but i I'm in the same mindset of you. Brian Flores is the number one guy. I think that's the easiest answer. I think that's everyone's easiest one answer. Mm -hmm. But for me, you talked you talked about what you would like for the DC to be or what he would like to instill, and that's just being a player's coach. No better player's coach than a former player who's won a Super Bowl True. and has coached on a Super Bowl team like Jer Gerard, I call him Jared, Gerard Mayo. Um, he hasn't been named a defensive coordinator, obviously, because Bill Belichick has kept the same coordinators in place for the last decade outside of guys moving, you know, Flores, um, Vrabel. And so now Mayo is up next to be the defensive coordinator, but he's also been getting head coaching um, interviews, which just tells me that if he's so respected – in, inside mm. the Patriots organization. He's got a body of work there in one of our weakest positions. I'd like to know that he's a linebackers coach. Yes. So hopefully he'll be able to fix that if he were to come in and, you know, obviously take over the D.C. But at the end of the day, Jeff, players, players coach, I think it's just written on the wall right there. And he should know better than anyone how to get guys going because he he was in the same room that they were one or in the same position they were once. So hopefully that's my he's so he's so close to what I would like in a coach just in mm. general that I want him over Flores, but I know what I've seen from Flores more so than Mayo. I so. don't I don't think you go wrong either way with those two guys. And I think those are your, your top two options. What you have to consider here, and this is why I do truly think it's a great year for coordinators, because you have to look at what guys are going, how guys are going to feel, even if you get asked to interview for a head coaching job. At least I would. Now I get, I know, I get it. It's re, it's attractive. Okay, head coach. I'm sure that that's a lot of guys' goals. But, and I don't know. Mayo can't be too old. I know Flores is a younger guy. 38. So you got time. So let's if play the fancy range. Let's play the cards right and say okay. Let's just say that this offense is uh, the Browns' offense is top ten next year, as far as you know your advanced stats, similar to what it was this year. Let's say for the whole season, 
do you want to come and be a defensive coordinator for an offense that you know could be really good, which makes your job easier? The better your offense is, the easier it is to be a defensive coordinator. Or do you want to go somewhere that's a bad situation where you could be out in a one season, two seasons, and kind of derail your entry or re-entry into head coach? Flores, he don't have many more chances as a head coach. Once you get, you know, one or two chances, it's very tough in the league to be like, unless people pretty much agree that your circumstances sucked and that maybe it wasn't all your fault or you got, you know, you kind of got scapegoated out of there. But between the whole Miami situation, the NFL, Flores, I don't think should take a uh, should take a head coaching job this year, regardless if he comes to us or not. Not I don't think he was there. I think let's just say linebackers coach. Both there they were linebackers coach respectively. So you haven't you know moved up to DC yet, right? So do you want to go to Carolina and like who knows how what their future is and you could get you know scapegoated in ten games or one season and be out or do you want to come to a team that's you know a little bit more established, has young pieces on the defense that you can work with. And, okay, you know, nine wins gets you into the playoffs, which we saw this year. Ten wins guarantees you a spot. Right. It's interesting as far as where people are going to move this offseason. Yeah, no, and with those two names, I mean, I keep it as I think those two are – they're the highest of the echelon that you're going to get out of these guys. The reason why I wasn't – you know, why I said that Schwartz was – farther underneath mayo for me it's just that i think he's too close to um he's too close to the the idea of like he can move into um joe woods's spot and just be another joe woods but slightly better i don't right. i don't really want slightly better i need like a vast improvement with the talent that we have because yes. i do think we have talent there's there's one of two things that we haven't said here Either our team is very talented and the defensive coordinator was very bad or the defensive coordinator was dealing with unmotivated players, which is a very bad thing for yes. the team in general, not That's just the worse. D.C. But the reason why I think Jim Schwartz is a interesting name and why it could be very likely is just because, again, he's coming from Philadelphia. Um, him, Andrew Barry. Right. Ties. You know, ties it just it kind of makes sense and he kind of gives me Kevin Stefanski vibes which is like I don't know that I Do we necessarily want that? want that for my D coordinator but no I once we get to Schwartz it's it's like I I lose my my don't want to call it passion but I lose my like wanting to dig deep into like all right, well, who's after him and who's after him? Because then right. you're just taking huge, significant drop-offs unless someone, you know, big who, you know, they either want to come, like you said, come back into coaching or gets fired as a head coach and then wants to be a coordinator again comes available. No, honestly, it's very, very true because I just, like you said, I agree with the – I would like to see a significant – improvement mostly because of who you're playing in the division you know has the defense been on par with you know the pittsburgh's of the world with the baltimore how basically they are every season not really i mean you've seen some glimpses of it and those have been our best games you right. know we play cincinnati really well the defense looks like one of the better afc north defenses you know when we win a playoff game in pittsburgh it looks like the best defense in the afc north regardless of how many points we ended up giving up the turnovers you know where are the turnovers i want a guy who's going to coach our players to go for the football i want to i want to lead the Turn league around. in turn i want to lead the lead in in turnovers interceptions and i just I, you know what i think you just got to do a full 180 and just go from non-blitzing to just send in the send in the house well it was crazy because jeff two seasons ago we we were one of the most um influential teams in taking the ball away we right. had the most turn we had uh i think we were top five or top ten in turnovers and the last two years have just been and and you and obviously what's crazy to say about the last two years have been worse is that after that first year, we went out and got defensive players that we thought were going to be huge, you know, mm -hmm. big name guys for this team. John Johnson, Troy Hill, Anthony Walker. Obviously, we drafted Greg Newsom, JOK, but none of it's worked out as of right now. Uh, it's all looked like it's kind of going to go in shambles. But what do you think was the culprit? 
Do you think it was Joe Woods? Do you just think that they couldn't get behind him? Or do you think that some guys, while they weren't motivated, also didn't do anything to help the situation? Probably everything. I mean, the Woods issue is that he was never consistent. Um, well, the only consistency is that we couldn't stop the run, and that's just you can't have you can't have that in the AFC North. You cannot stop the run with some of these running backs, Mixon, Dobbins, Najee Harris. I mean, you're not going to last very long. That's just the truth. Not even to mention Lamar Jackson. So, yeah, I think it's that. I think you still have some younger players. I think you're one of the younger rosters in the league. So, who's the experience in the room? Who's going to keep the room together? That could also have been a Joe Woods thing. And then. You know, at a certain point, you're going to have guys check out if you're eliminated from the playoffs. So, is it everything? Sure, but is it? It's really Woods and a lot of inexperience because I think when you saw people who had experience go down, you know, Anthony Walker being the big one, then it was he kind of went off the rails from there. Yeah, and I think there's been a couple of situations where just players haven't meshed with the team itself. Obviously, sure. Clowney and last year, I would say. Uh, Technically not McDowell, but you know he's not on the team this year, and then right. Winfrey this year as well. And the Just, personnel, you know, there's a, you were down to basically no linebackers at the end of the year. We never right. had D tackles. Um, you really didn't have a competent second even edge right. for most of the season. So I just think this roster was maybe it got depleted and it wasn't as good as we thought it was start coming into the year. By the time you're about eight weeks in, so. My issue is that in the DC is always going to be coupled with what can you get out of players we bring in and what can you bring out of players we draft. So and who can you bring in? That's always the one thing that I find fair. very interesting about like, you know, even when who's your guy? Him, yeah, like do you have a guy in free agency or a guy that you'd want to trade Valid. for? You know, I always like that kind of aspect of it because it it gives you like a surefire, like, oh, okay, this guy's got a rapport with you know, right players or just a good player in general or whatever but um jeff to wrap this up i know you gave us who you would like for us to have as the defensive coordinator now i'd like you to tell us who is going to be the defensive coordinator flores i think mostly because like i told you earlier on twitter watson is attractive to him always has been in the past and i i just think that that makes the most sense if he's not Unless he does something crazy and takes a head coaching job, I don't know. I don't really know who else is looking for coordinate like DC. The only the only problem with me and like thinking for Flores, you know, outside of the things that have already been stated, um, I just like why would you outside of a a pay raise? Why would you go from the or from the Steelers to the Browns? You know. That well, that has to be it. I mean, because I'm telling you, I don't think he was really the official D DC there. Okay. They hired they hired him as the linebackers coach because because I remember us saying in the preseason that that's basically like having two defensive coordinators. Almost certain. So I think he would be getting a pay bump, but I don't know why Pittsburgh wouldn't just be like, "Okay, you're the DC now." That's what I don't get. Okay. So Keith Butler is the yes. DC? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's interesting. I thought when they, I thought when they announced it originally, it was he was the linebackers coach in DC. But all right, well, that's fair. Then he gets an upgrade in uh, his coaching position, which obviously he wants to, you know, work his way back up to head coaching. I would assume, but yeah, that makes sense. So you're saying Brian Flores? I'm gonna go with the answer that I hate the most, not the most, but I hate is Jim Schwartz. I just think it lines up way too much. It, it's like the it's the yeah. one it's the one answer where people, I think online are going to be like, oh, it's not Brian Flores, but you know it's good enough. Right. I think it's going to be one of those situations, and people are going to be like, you're just going to talk yourself into a situation and be like, he's just slightly better, Joe Woods, and right. maybe that maybe maybe that will be good enough. You know, Jeff, maybe it will Could be because, like you said in you know our previous videos, you know couple games there where you only won by or you only lost by a couple of points so maybe you only need three or f four you know yep but jeff that's where we're gonna call this one do you have anything else to say before we call it a quits no just hope that uh we make a interview with people accordingly do the do the homework and uh make a good decision don't jump to any conclusions I do believe Flores interviewed today. Today is Thursday. Yes, the 12th Schwartz interviewed. It's interesting. I don't know if the scheduling has it, but they interviewed Schwartz first. Or did they, right? 
Yes, I believe it was ago. Schwartz. Yeah, it was uh, Schwartz first, Flores. Does that tip their hand that Schwartz is like the top of their pick? I don't know if you could read in between the lines like that, but it's just interesting how that fell. Yeah, it's interesting. Concern- well, I guess they have a bye week, and right? Are they at the, the – the Eagles are at the top of the NFC, right? So they have a bye week. Um, yeah, wait, did we interview – how did we, how did we interview Schwartz with him being on a team that's in the playoffs? They, they're allowed to do it. You they have just to, can't agree to anything? You have to – yeah, I think you have to ask for permission. Oh. And then when they – whenever they get eventually – no, because I think – because didn't um, McDaniels – didn't Josh McDaniels say he was going to go to the Raiders before, like, or like, didn't the Patriots make the playoffs and he said he was going there or something? Jim Schwartz is was is on the Tennessee coaching staff. That's what we're getting confused. Eagles defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz speaks with the coaching staff Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field. Oh, this article has him in a Titans hoodie. I Schwartz is. Wait a minute. He's been in the NFL for 29 years. Holy. All right. We're both. We need to do our homework. That just shows you neither of us want the guy. Well, I, I could, no, he's a, yeah, he's an Eagles coach. No, he's a Tennessee coach. He's been both. He was eat, built. All right. So Titans, he was, was he the DC when Philly won it in 18? He was on the Eagles in 18. I've got to look at his Wikipedia page As a now. defensive assistant for the last two seasons with the Titans. Coach for the Titans, Bills, Eagles, and then the Titans again. Oh, he was part of the, the championship team for the, for the Eagles. So, I mean, that's interesting. That's something to consider, I yeah. guess. All right. So that's where we were getting hung up on. But, you know, regardless of that, uh, if you guys made it all the way through this video, please make sure you are liking, subscribing, and leaving us a comment. Who do you want to see as the DC? What's a name out there that we haven't talked about or yes. heard or seen yet? You know, is there someone who's currently working or who's sitting at home watching, waiting for their turn to uh, get back into the game? Who knows? Let us know in the comments below. But with that being said, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Whew. All right. One last one. Positions of need. Should we do this one or should we? Uh, would you I like to? Wait. Um, it's up to you. What would, what would you like to do? I just I think saw- it's good. Going to be interesting to figure out. We have so much time. That's the issue. The offseason really is so long. Yeah. It's like, are they going to bring John Johnson back? Right. I think we could do individual players Johnny. like that. Yeah. I here. Here's what I'll say. Um, if you um, if you're good with what we recorded today, then we'll we'll cap it there. Yeah. I and then what I'm thinking for, what I'm thinking for, like moving forward. Um, you know, we'll still do like one video like session a week, but. In terms of like, like with Logan in the shorts, you know, how is he going about making those? Because like, how do you get the video to be that ratio in like whatever? So you I do doing? that. All, I do all that on my end. Oh, okay. All right. So he just I sends would just... me what he sends in the chat is what I take and just put into Premiere, and then I just change the sequence settings, the uh, pixel size. Oh, okay. All right. So I'll try to I'll try to think about like what I can do shorts wise. Okay. Obviously, like. When you get to the when you get too close to the draft, it's like oh, you can just make those. Either we can do those and make those videos, or we can try to like pump one out a day and just like I can try to just look up a random play or like a you right know, random player and do a thing on him and then whatnot. And I can do the same thing for free agency too, you know. So, yeah. um, but that's what I was thinking for shorts moving forward. Um, but yeah, we can like wait and kind of see what the rumors are heading out. I mean, sure. they all should have had their exit interviews. So I don't so know. It's like, what are we doing with the safety room? If John Johnson comes back, I think he's pretty much a goner just because of the amount of money we could save. Not even that if they like him or not, but just because the amount of money we could save. Well, you got to think like that whole, they're probably just going to bring him back out of necessity. Cause you're sitting there with Ronnie Harrison, Grant Delpit, and then dudes who just like haven't played at all. Richard LeCow. Um, right, but we could save almost 14 mil by Hooper doing the Hooper. Yeah, I I agree. I just like 
my thing with the Hooper thing was like Hooper genuinely dropped and dropped the ball and <laughs> fell over like a fucking dunce and was just awful by himself. John Johnson, I can't tell if if it's because of him or if it's because of Joe Woods. Like well, I unfortunately I need to see another true. year of him. Um and hopefully they can trade him like if all's over and he's like or like they can trade him before the deadline. Maybe that's game. interesting. But I don't know. So but yeah, I'm good with that. All right, cool. All right. So we're all good then? 